some time back, probably at least maybe almost a year ago, I pointed out that the little horn in Daniel, I'm not going to review all that teaching tonight. If you want to go to it, you go to the archives, check out the summary, see which last day message number that was, and review it. Listen to it for the first time. It's there. I recommend you listen to all of them if you're a first-time listener, starting with number one and catching up. But I pointed out the little horn was Adolf Hitler. I want to, tonight, I want to tonight to make the connection between Adolf Hitler, the Muslim Brotherhood, and the Palestinians. All this was in the workings, even back 70, 80 years ago. They all identify with the purpose. And that purpose was for the extermination of the Jews, the elimination of the Jews. This was even before they became an independent state known as Israel today, back in 1948. The workings was already taking place behind the scenes. A plan to destroy Jews was under the Belfer Declaration and the British mandate, they had control of the area. And the goal was to try to make independent states. And one of those states was a Jewish state, the state of Israel. And as that was taking place, even though Britain, being a, a beast within itself, as we already reviewed, and I not too long ago, taught on, it was one of the horns in Revelations chapter 13. Now, with Brit Britain under control, they failed miserably of trying to settling the issue of what the Jews would get and what came to be known as the Palestinians, even though they never called that before, Would eventually get. In fact, they got the majority of the land. Most of that land we call Jordan now. That's where most of the Palestinians, the Palestinians of today, came from. They flooded the area when they knew the time was close of Israel becoming a state, or even the possibility of it. And all these workings was going on behind the scenes with the Muslim Brotherhood, which you hear about a lot today. I pointed them out over and over. They're everywhere. I believe they're the beast main foot soldier in establishing its empire and kingdom in these last days. Let me just read you something. And maybe this could enlighten you some more of what I, already, what I already taught in the past. And if you haven't listened to it before, I suggest you go back to it after this program or sometime in the near future so you have a good understanding of what I'm talking about tonight. If this is the first time, don't get discouraged. If you go back to those teachings in the last day series, this will all make sense. It will all gel together and you'll have a better understanding of what I'm saying tonight. The origins of the Islamic Jihad against America, and I want you to listen closely. The origins of the Islamic Jihad against America, Israel, the West, and Jews in general, can be traced back to the Muslim Brotherhood. I've been saying that of which both Palestinian, Palestinian hero Arafat, which is no longer living, and Osama bin Laden were members and of which Adolf Hitler was an ally. All this was connected, folks. 
That's why, to some of you, it seems strange that here out of nowhere, here comes Adolf Hitler. And how does he blend in with Daniel and the beast in Revelation 13? It was all connected. They had the same common goal to take over the world or as much as they, of the world they can take over and to eliminate Israel to Jews. It's always been about that. Throughout biblical history, it's always about eliminating God's chosen people. The origin of Islamic Jihad against America, Israel, the West, and the Jews in general can be traced back to the Muslim Brotherhood, of which both Palestinian hero Arafat and Osama bin Laden were members, and of which Adolf Hitler was an ally. They all share the goal of the complete and total extermination of Jews. Well, that's a strange coincidence, isn't it? Is it a coincidence? No, it all ties in together. Once you understand what the Bible says about it, and what you already tried to do in earlier teachings, the Muslim Brotherhood was founded in 1928. Some of this will be reviewed for you, but it's good to listen to it over and over again. The Muslim Brotherhood was founded in 1928 by the Wahhab Wahhabists. Wahhabism is an extrem extremist form of Islam which envisions an absolute Islamic empire which has no place for Jews or Christians, much less atheists. Wahhabism was responsible for, responsible for banning all other religions from Saudi Arabia. Its goal is a worldwide empire under Sharia law, which I haven't got to yet, and I will. According to the Pan-Arabic doctrine of the Muslim Brotherhood, the entire Middle East must be completely free of any non-Muslims. Hence, Zionist or Jewish settlers must be exterminated. Now, this plan goes back as far as 1928. It was members of the Muslim Brotherhood that founded the Hamas. And some people don't think they're a terrorist group. They don't know their history. That's for sure. They don't know the purpose and the plans that the Muslim Brotherhood always have had, and it hasn't changed. If anything, it's gotten worse. And it's more detailed how they plan to get there. It was members of the Muslim Brotherhood that found the Hamas, the Hezbollah, another terrorist group, the Islamic Jihad, and Al-Qaeda. And Al-Qaeda. They can all be traced back to the Muslim Brotherhood. Which, in the future, I will trace it one by one, God willing, when the time is right. Back to the Muslim Brotherhood. A Muslim Nazi flag of World War II. World War II. Now that's what? Seventy-some years ago? And guess what? They share a common denominator, a common purpose with the Nazis. And back in World War II, they created a flag that identified the Brotherhood, the Wahhabism individuals, or the Wahhabists, with the Nazis with Adolf Hitler. Put it up. I think they have a picture of it. Put it up. 
Let me put my other glasses on so I could see it along with you. That, that's not it. Go to the next one. There you go. What do you see on that picture? It's a black flag in the background. On the left corner of the flag, the left side, left lower corner of the flag, what do you see? A swastika. And of course, the rest of the flag is an arm with a sword. One of the brotherhood symbols. A symbol that is used often in Islamic terrorist groups. That was just a coincidence? Or once again, signposts were laid down for us to see when the time was right the connection. I don't think it's an accident, folks, and I don't think it's, a, it's any coincidence. Now come back to me. That goes back to World War II. We know who the Wahhabis, the jihadists, the Muslim Brotherhood were associating with. And we know that Adolf Hitler and the Nazis had the support of the Muslim Brotherhood, had the secret support of Saudi Arabia, had the support of all Muslims want the extermination of the Jews, and Adolf Hitler supported their beliefs and plans and how they would go about that extermination. That's what I'm trying to drive you home. That's why there's no doubt that Adolf Hitler was a little horn. There's too many connections. There's too many affiliations. There's too many associations with these groups that are all connected to the beast in one way or the other. One of the most influential leaders of the Muslim Brotherhood was Amin al-Husseini. Al Husseini traveled to Germany to World War II to forge an alliance with Hitler and spend time at his side. You never hear this information. You don't read this in the history books. Even the best historians that have written about World War II and everything that went down in that period Leave all this information out. Why? Don't you think it's important? Don't you think it's relevant to today's times of understanding what's happened the last 70 to 80 years? As we come to a close of biblical history, in a sense to rejoice that because we, as trusting and faith in Christians in Christ, see the time is at its end. The clock is ticking. The sand is almost through the hourglass. And it's not going to flip over to buy us additional time. I'm not one that believes that. Al Hussein he traveled to Germany in World War II to forge an alliance with Hitler and spend time at his side. The Muslim Brotherhood and the Nazi Party of Germany shared the common goal of exterminating Jews. With the help of Hitler, with the help of Hitler, several anti Jewish movements were formed in the Middle East. Muslim Brotherhood member Abdul Gamal Nasir, who would later become president of Egypt, founded a socialist party called Young Egypt. Modeled after what? The Nazi Party. The Nazis Party. The slogan of Young Egypt was the same as Hitler's. The same as Hitler's. One and the same, folks. One folk, this is what it is. One folk, one party, one leader. One folk, one party, one leader. 
Nazi hate literature such as Mein Kampf and supposed conspiracy theories about Zionists such as the Protocols of the Wise Elders of Zion became bestsellers. Bestsellers where? In Arab countries. Another strange coincidence, I guess. Mein Kampf and the conspiracy theories about Zionists. Bestsellers in the Arab countries. In some countries, it became part of the school curriculum. According to such literature, Jews secretly ruled the world. Put a picture up. That first picture up. Not the second one with the flag, the first one. There in that picture, you'll see Al Husseini there in the left in the black as he's giving the salute, as he's checking out the Muslim SS troops. I'm not making this stuff up. Not only, only there's written documents and history that proves everything I'm reading to you tonight, there's also many pictures, lost in archives, many pictures of all these events taking place, of all these associations and affiliations, even of Al Husseini with some SS troop commanders. There, you see some right there in the picture as he's saluting, as he's marching down the causeway with SS troops on either side, with SS troop officers a little further in the back. It's clear as day. I can show you many pictures like this. Time doesn't allow me to. Now, there is also a flag that was inspired by the Nazis. Put it up. It's the next picture. I hope it's the next picture. No, next picture after that. There you go. Now, that's a black flag. Obviously, you see a white circle, which... By the way, if you've been following the teaching, I'll get back to it next year, of the moon god in a kind of a artistic swastika. Now, who was this Nazi-inspired flag created for? Well, I'm going to tell you. Keep it, on the, keep it on the picture until I tell you to take it off. This is the flag of the Nazi-inspired Syrian that's right, Syrian. National Socialist Party. From which Syrian anti-Western and anti-Jewish sediment first arose, folks. Coincidence? Strange occurrence? Or were they all in this together? The beast, the little horn. Remember, the book of Revelation. Who wrote the book of Revelation? Now, it has application for all of us. Come back to me now. And I've kind of hinted this before. The book of Revelation has application to all of us. But specifically, it applies to the Jews. Well, how can you say that? I was never told that before. For instance, you'll see seven churches in the book of Revelation. John was an apostle to the Jews. You see that in Acts. That was clear. I've covered this before in some of the James teachings, which I have to get back to also in the future. As I laid down the first few verses in the history that went down between Paul, James, and the church, or churches. John was an apostle to the Jews. The events that are happening in the book of Revelation is Jew-related. It's Middle East-related. It affects the whole world and affects all of humanity, and we have application, too, as Christians to that message. But specifically, it's to the Jews. And I know I'm going to irritate some, but let them try to disprove that. 
That's why Paul has his seven churches, and these seven churches are the churches to the Jews. Probably synagogues that turn into churches. But Paul had his seven churches that he wrote to, to the Gentiles. There's a difference, and you'll never completely, and I'll get back to all this in the future, but you'll never know the full application, what is going down in Scripture, until you have that separation. Once again, there's application for everyone, so don't twist my words. But there's more detailed, specific application to the Jews in the book of Revelation, as in the book of Daniel, and Zechariah, and others, and Isaiah, and Ezekiel. I have to get back to that. It's not a coincidence. I'm going to say it enough tonight so it dings in your brain. All right, dings in your brain that it is not a coincidence. This is what's setting up the last push of prophecy that you see in Daniel and in also Revelation. And these groups, nations, had a common denominator that would come and go in some cases, like Hitler, but still some of the prophecies yet to be fulfilled. It's in the process of being fulfilled concerning the beast and its last days. But the common denominator was the extermination of the Jews. Put up another picture. Let's get the pictures out of the way. There you see. What do you think you're looking at there? This picture here, what you see on the screen, is the Hezbollah army. That means today, not 70 or 80 years ago, today, practicing the Hitler salute. Practicing the Hitler salute. Coincidence? I don't think so. It's all connected, folks. Now, come back to me. And I'll go back to what I was doing here. Got the pictures out of the way to make the point. As a leader of the Muslim Brotherhood, And just having returned from Germany after w the war, this is Al Husseini, co-founded the Arab League, which intended to follow the original vision of Wahhabists for one pan of Arabic empire under Sharia law. Under guidance of the Muslim Brotherhood and the pan-Arabic plan, settlers only started to move to Israel only started to move to Israel when it became clear that Jews were moving back there. Palestinians, the word Palestinians, the concept of Palestinians, are an invention of the Muslim Brotherhood, loosely based on the biblical Philistine that was in the area that is now called Gaza Strip. There is no such thing as Palestinians. The people that are today known as Palestinians moved in from Egypt, from the southwest, Jordan from the east, Lebanon from the north, and Syria from the northeast to, the, to fight the holy war, jihad, against Jews. A part of this holy war is the dissemination dissemination of the conspiracy theories about Jews in schools, in the media, and the internet. These theories are meant to portray Jews as evil perpetrators and themselves as victims. A brief look at a map, if you have one of the Middle East, you can look at it. A brief look at a Middle Eastern map reveals that Muslims are not helpless. You look as far as you can, before you hit the Atlantic Ocean, 
all in that parallel plane, all the way till you hit the Pacific Ocean. In today's world, even back in World War II, for instance, it was controlled by the Arab world. Tiny little Israel had a sliver of territory, or trying to, at that time, obtain a sliver of territory. But the Arab world didn't want no part of that and would not accept that and did everything they could to exterminate the Jews from achieving that. They were partners and in total agreement with Hitler and his plan. They are not helpless and victimized as generally believed. That's the media working you over, folks. From all ends. It's the furthest thing from the truth. Just think how rich Arab countries are because of the lust for oil. They can bail out prop up, build up, or whatever way you want to say it, all these poor nations of the Arab world where there probably would be very little suffering taking place. But that's not what they're about. That's not what their goal is. They want the rest of the gullible world to think that Israel is oppressing them. And anybody in the West that supports Israel is oppressing them, keeping, keeping them down, not allowing them, not, not allowing them to succeed. It's a lie. It's always been a lie, and it's never changed. It's part of the plan. Let's continue. I'm going to run out of time. Palestinian leader Yasser Arafat was a member of the Muslim Brotherhood. Did you know that? He was a member of the Muslim Brotherhood. Their goal was not to have a Palestinian state. That was a lie also. But to destroy Jews wherever they are. Hence, Husseini, as president of the Arab League, commanded, quote, I declare holy war my Muslim brothers. Murder the Jews, end of quote. Contrary to the misinformed public opinions, it is not the goal of, of the Hamas Palestinians to have a Palestinian nation. They have been given dozens of chances to have their own nation. But they want to destroy Israel. That's their goal. People keep asking, why is this conflict going on for so long? Why can't any of the mediators help? Why is no solution found? The answer is that the Muslim Brotherhood does not want any solution then Hitler's, then Hitler's final solution. These people are therefore not only the enemy of Israel in America, but also the en enemy of all non-extremist Muslims. The wars against Israel were not declared by single nations. They were declared by the Arab League, by Pan-Arabic Islamofascism, Lebanon's wars Lebanon's wars against Israel, Egypt's wars against Israel, Syria's wars against Israel, Jordan's wars against Israel, all orchestrated by the Arab League, the Wahhabis of the Muslim Brotherhood. By the way, Lebanon was a multi-religious. Now, it's, you could hardly find a Christian there now. But they were a multi-religious, democratic, and open society before the Muslim Brotherhood took over. In 1964, the Arab League solidified the existence of a Palestinian people by founding the Marxist Palestinian Liberation Organization, what came to be known as the PLO. The fact that it was founded 15 years after Israel was created reveals the artificial nature of the overall conflict. Its stated goal was the liberation of the Palestinian people through armed struggle. In 1987, the Muslim Brotherhood founded Hamas, another terrorist organization, 
from the Hamas Charter. Just like Hitler and the Muslim Brotherhood, the Hamas promotes anti-Jewish conspiracy theories to justify their extermination. To justify their extermination. These are the same claims Hitler made about the Jews to justify genocide. These are the same claims that the current Iranian regime is making about Jews. Iranian's leader, Amahad Ahmadinejad, or whatever how the heck you say his name, is known for his Holocaust denial and his Holocaust denial and his financial backing of both Hamas, Hezbollah, and other freedom fighters. Well, those of you in the know that have been researching this information out, it's just not Hezbollah. It's just not Hamas any longer, even though they're not backing down. They're increasing their efforts on that particular goal of theirs. They're now imp penetrating Iraq. And they're trying to get into Af Afghanistan. Do I think they're going to be successful in Iraq? I wouldn't bet against it, folks. The beast is making its move. The Islamic Empire, it's making its move. It's digging in. It's setting up its bases. It's converting more and more people to the idea that Israel and the West need to be eliminated. As every year goes by before the end of time, if the West won't come to their, to their senses, they will be eliminated, at least their ideas, by the infiltration of the Muslim growing population that will force to change their ideas. That judge, that woman judge in Oklahoma, still hasn't made the final ruling, ruling on what it's going to do. Whether it's going to put a temporary inj injunction on what people voted in in Oklahoma that the only rule of law would be the Constitution and state laws, not Sharia law, because Muslims won't be judged by Sharia law. For that to be even an issue is mind-blowing in this country. It's already happened in New Jersey. And of course, it's going through the appeals courts. It's already happened in other states. And they'll keep hammering, they'll keep pressuring, and through care, the, mu the Muslim organization that was created by none other than Muslim, Muslim Brotherhood, once again, have all their, what we like to call lobbyists in Washington, let's just call them lobbyists for the Muslim Brotherhood overall plan to keep hammering it, to keep using our legal system to break it down. You're naive and you're definitely not following what's going on if you don't think there is not going to come with all these efforts and persistent some breakthroughs for the Muslim world in these key areas and issues and how they're going to be judged. And once they break through, it opens up the floodgates. It will never happen in this country. Did you ever think it even get to the courts and the courts are having a hard time to decide what they're going to do with it? Don't tell me it cannot happen. It's happening. Back to this. The Iranian leader is known for his Holocaust denial and his financial backing of, of both Hamas, Hezbollah, and other freedom fighters. The Hamas echoes Iran's opinions on the Holocaust. The Holocaust, excuse me. The Hamas share an insanity similar to the Nazis in that they have no qualms sending out innocent children as suicide bombers, calling them freedom fighters for Allah. 
in connection with the U.S. war against Soviet communism, like I told you before, when we're talking about the TSA before this teaching tonight. People are upset about the pat-downs or the scanning of children. I showed you a video not too long ago, children trained to be terrorists at a very young age. Well, that's over there. You don't think that's not happening here? You're crazy and a loon, and you, you're definitely naive, and you got your head in the sand. Like I said, I don't know what the solution is. I just know the times we're living in and why this is happening. Children as suicide bombers calling them freedom fighters for Allah. In connection with the U.S. war against Soviet communism in Afghanistan, the CIA temporarily forged an alliance with Wahhabis, or the Muslim Brotherhood, members such as Osama bin Laden. Bin Laden later breaks his ties with America and is funded by the Saudis to build Al-Qaeda. Yet another manifestation of the Muslim Brotherhood whose goal is to rid the world of democratic Western-style democracies such as America, Europe, and Israel. Israel is the only open and democratic society of the Middle East. And it is their priority to get rid of it first. The claim that Osama bin Laden was created by the U.S. is propaganda waged by the Muslim Brotherhood. The, prop, the popular claim that 9-11 was done by the Mossad, Mossad also originates from that same source and directly contradicts the fact that many Islamo-extremists celebrated 9-11 as a victory against a Jewish-slash-American oppressor. Between 1989 and 1996, Islamic Jihad in Sudan, where was the uproar, by the way, what I'm about to read to you? Where was the uproar? Between 1999 and where was the intervention? By any country, including the United States of America. Knowingly knowing a slaughtering was taking place. Between 1989 and 1996, Islamic Jihad in Sudan kills 4 million people. I didn't make a mistake there. I said million. 4 million people people. Bin Laden and his Muslim Brotherhood friends al Sahrawi and al-Bashir masterminded the largest genocide since Hitler's bloodthirsty rampage through Europe. In 1994, yet another offshoot of the Muslim Brotherhood is founded, the Taliban of Afghanistan. That's why I pray for our military personnel every day. They don't know what they've gotten involved in. They don't know what they're fighting against. They don't know what the enemy is. Oh, yes, they know the enemy as far as a physical presence, where they are and maybe what they represent, but they don't know from a biblical standpoint what it means and what it represents. They're fighting a losing battle. I'm sorry to say, but that's what it is. A losing battle. This battle will only be won if Scripture is correct, and I believe it is, by Christ himself. By Christ himself when he comes back and the saints are following. Sorry, I don't care how much of a superpower you think in a military sense the United States is. It won't destroy the beast. Only Christ can. In 1994, yet another offshoot of the Muslim Brotherhood is founded, the Taliban of Afghanistan. Osama bin Laden returns from Sudan to join the Taliban. The entire war on terror is actually a continuation of a war of the war. It's not a is actually a continuation of the war against Nazis. Nazism survived. After World War II, through Project Paperclip, which you probably never heard of, many German scientists were recruited to America, but most of the military officers attained visas to places like Syria, Egypt, Yemen, Lebanon, 
This is why Nazi literature started appearing there in the 1950s. This is why between the late 40s and 70s, 1970s, one war after another was waged on the Jews from Arab states. The public has been led to believe that the Mideast conflict is all about land and Palestinians wanting self-determination. But if that were true, the conflict would have ended long ago. This is a much larger conflict with much deeper agendas. Do you really believe that Jews wanting 1% of Arab land, just 1% of Arab land, a little strip in the desert, which was practically uninhabited before, that's what everybody seems to forget, would lead to 50 years of terror? Not just there any longer, by the way, in other places of the world also. Prior to Israel being founded, the era was ruled by the British Empire, one of the horns of the two-horned beast. Not by Palestinians, by the British Empire. And by the way, the British Empire gave what became known as Palestinians, which mostly were Jordanians and Egyptians, a big chunk of the land, what is now called Jordan. Not to Israel. Do you believe that Jews wanting 1% of Arab land, a little strip in the desert, which is practically uninhabited before, would lead to 50 years of terror? Prior to Israel being founded, the Israel was, Israel was ruled by the British Empire, not by Palestinians. Palestinians are mostly Jordanians. The homeland of Palestinians is Jordan. hundred years ago, a large number of Palestinians were actually Christians. They were driven away from the area to make place for the new agenda. The reason the Palestinians rejected the UN proposals and the Oslo proposals, Oslo proposals, which would have been given them 97% of what they claimed they wanted, plus Jerusalem as their capital, is because they do not actually want peace or two nations. They want a Palestinian nation from Jordan to the sea. And that's their quote. I'm quoting what they said, folks, not what I'm saying. Not what this person said. What they have said, a direct quote from their representatives, a Palestinian nation from Jordan to the sea. That means Israel is eliminated. This can only be achieved by following through with Hitler's plan to exterminate all Jews. I think I've made the point tonight. The little horn. The two-horned beast what we call now the conflict with the Palestinians, what we call now the struggle of the Arab world against Israel in the West, is all fabricated, it's all blended together by Satan, who controlled not only Hitler, but also made the connection, because he made the affiliation and association have one common denominator with each other. The beast has something in common with the Little horn. The little horn has something in common with the beast. They all have the same goal. Specifically, to eliminate Israel, well, even before Israel was a nation, the Jews. Period. Now, Hitler eliminated at least six million Jews. And, of course, there was other countries, including Russia, That was part of the plan and why there's also a connection, which we'll see in Scripture, in other areas besides Russia, that have this common goal also, whether they know it or not. And I'll get to that. But hopefully this gives you a better connection why Hitler's important part of history to understand. He's in the Bible. He's called the little horn in Daniel. He's there. He's there alongside with the developing beast. No longer living, but the idea and dreams of that wicked empire and the empire and the beast empire now is still going strong against God's chosen people. But guess what? Christ will have the last word. As I always conclude with message of this sort, look up. Your redemptive John nigh. He's coming back. 
He's going to take care of business and he'll bring true peace forevermore. It's in his hands. And as nations struggle with each other to try to take control of this beast, they will fail. But Christ won't. Our trust is not in governments of this world anyway or nations. It's in him. And he will see it through and get the job done. If he didn't, then why even believe the Bible? Why even be a Christian? Well, I believe the Bible, and I think you do too. Now, I'll be back in this series next year. Hopefully, you'll stay tuned, stick around. As I move on to other subjects, I'll come back to it in the beginning of January. Pray to God.